Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, DSC broadcast of Bed with Embedded Systems. So, embedded systems uh, and computers so, are mysterious in their own way. But uh, you have to understand it as engineers, uh, don't you? So, let us begin with uh, Rajat, who is going to take you on a flight into the embedded systems and the internals of computers uh, from the zero part to the point where you can start learning. So, here is Rajat with me. He is uh, very much experienced in IoT. He has worked in four to five startups already, he has got a couple of papers written in the uh, reputed journals. He is an EC guy and of course started his career with a blinking light like everyone does and moved it towards something that works like a Google Assistant that he's going to show you today as well. So hi Rajat, how are you? I'm fine, how are you Rithik? I'm good too. So this is your stage and uh, over to you now. Let's begin. Okay, sure. So hello everyone. So yeah, let's begin with the session. It's about that uh, bait the embedded system. Now, yeah, it's a uh, it was quite a good introduction to me that I am Rajatabha Chakraborty, actually a member of DSC HIT. And I have been working in robotics and IoT field since I was in first year. And today I'll be discussing about what is actually embedded system. Like we are very familiar with the term embedded system, but uh, how actually it works. Like in real life examples and what is what we actually mean by embedded systems, we'll be learning today. So yeah, this is a, the very basic definition of an embedded system. Like what actually it means. Let me... What actually it means? So embedded system is basically a microprocessor based computer hardware system. Or rather, we can say it is application based. Application based means that we can only do a specific task in it at, at a single time. Like for example, our uh, laptops. Laptops, they can do three different tasks at the same time. But for example, our uh, simple chip like our NAND gate or an OR gate, it can perform only one work at a single time. So that's it. Now, like it's in a simple word, we can say it as a specific system. Like, hope everyone. Is. Yeah, I guess everyone can see me. Okay, fine. Let's... So here, here I was. A specific task. Now coming to a very uh, brief definition that what is it different? Does your washing machine or AC contains an embedded system? Like, how would you greet it? Like, yes, it's definitely a big yes. Like you can think that whether it is a washing machine or an AC, we can always control or it always does a simple work. Like whenever we are pressing the button of an uh, a button of an AC, the infrared sensor, as you all know, the infrared light that goes and it, it is being catched by the sensors or the receivers that are present in our AC. And it can perform only a single task. And same goes with that it can perform only a single task that is either regulating the how much water level is there and that part. And the major thing is that embedded systems doesn't require your like regular software upgrades. Have you ever seen that your washing machine or AC is getting uh, or taking an update regularly? Like after one week, a person is coming and updating your AC or uh, washing machines or any type of devices. Like your even you can call your the TV remote. Does it require any type of your uh, software update it's probably a big no so that's where the difference between an application specific uh, like application specific or a general purpose this is the major you can rather say that what's important to us we have to know the embedded system it is the very basic or rather you can say the core of doing any arduino project or raspberry pi or the latest one pico or any type of you are working with ESP8266 or any board. This is the basic thing that you should be clear with first. So this is the actually intersection of three sets. The first is physical computing. 
so what do you understand by physical computing is that whenever like we always we have always seen that line follower robots or anything that is like uh, self uh, like a very famous term that is obstacle obstacle avoiding robots how that works that actually works using an ultrasonic sensor or any type of is uh, the in by us and uh, when a program it is being programmed in through the computer or something or any type of device not only uh, program using computer you can also program it by or a ubuntu machine that we use generally use in dominos or something the starting screen that you see ubuntu iot okay so yeah it is physical computing and the inter uh, like uh, the subset of that is cyber physical systems now a very uh, interesting example of cyber physical system is a smart grid now what we actually understand by a smart grid is that whenever like we are uh, not there in our homes and it is a uh, daytime and we don't need our lights to be turned on uh, and every fans or everything when we are not at home so that is it it it, it interferes or interacts with the physical world like it is completely dependent like day or night and then it works accordingly that is what we be knowing as smart grid and we have like smart grid is one of the best examples or like one of the uh, like one of the very famous projects of iot and the last thing is iot like everyone is going gaga over iot but what actually iot is iot is basically you can think that whenever there are like layers there are uh, we know that the physical layer like we have always seen that uh, the ola pedal cycles or the zoom car but like how this systems work like whenever we are like showing the qr code it is scanning the qr code and it is uh, the cycles are opening or whenever we are scratch scratching a card or something in the uh, zoom cars it is uh, like uh, zoom car it, it is opening so like how this is, whole thing is happening is just because of an iot iot device means we have a physical system like uh, what we understand by a physical system is like the say, thing we are being scanned that is a physical part and it is giving message to the cloud now what is stored in the cloud that's a complete part of iot and today we won't be getting that into that deep because today we'll be covering the basics of arduino and a uh, google assistant thing so yeah the intersection of these three things is termed as an embedded systems okay fine so next coming to the yeah this is very important like what's the difference between an embedded system and a computer like as all of you know and as previously i have told that embedded system is something that can only do a specific task at one like if you are giving this arduino for example to only perform the sum of two numbers and give the value to show the your computer screen at a single time but at the single time it cannot do two or three tasks together like not multitasker what you can say rather but in case of a computer computer is like you are you can run paint like i uh, in the same thing i am running an arduino uno in this uh, anything like esp826 is along with i am presenting everything so this is like a general purpose computer that's what the major difference embedded system and a computer like people always say that embedded systems computers are embedded systems but that's a sort of myth like a huge a computer is made up of various small processors like we intel core processors like what are these processors actually so they are actually like they have task we always some gpu like what's your graphics and all but what are these these are actually helping to make the course work what are course course means how when we are typing any key, uh, device in it like how it will means how fast it will execute the action execute the action means if you go deep into microprocessors there is a thing that it is being sent into the address bus and from back into the memory so uh, this whole interfacing like a control unit is there control unit and program counter this counters are being there that's deep into the microprocessors so the, that's how it works like there are many things to be discovered in, within a computer now going to the major part we can say that's yeah a very important thing that like, let me see that everyone is able to see it right hi everyone is able to see it my voice is uh, audible right prithik my voice is audible right Yes, my voice is audible. Right? Everyone right. is uh, enjoying the stream. Carry on, please. So okay. So now coming to the difference between a microprocessor versus microcontrollers. So like people always say that microprocessor and microcontrollers is same, but this is not actually the case. So like as I have shown in the picture, like it's actually a two. Like a father is the micro 
controller and the sun is the microprocessor what's the difference between sir and a microcontroller like we have seen that arduino is a microcontroller that we use in our labs like you will be using like who are in first years or who are in second years they have already uh, i think due to corona they couldn't use that or who are in third years they have already used like nand gate processors like 74 series or uh, these series are called microprocessors why because they don't have any peripherals now what do you understand by peripherals is that like uh, wait like i you hope you can see this one see this is uh, like everyone can see i guess yeah. so everyone can see let me show you see this is a type of like your arduino so arduino is actually basically a micro uh, controller why it is a micro controller because you have several pins over here the as you can see these are the pins that you can understand and you can get but uh, this is a, a node mcu this is also like it's blinking the led this is also the same thing like you you are having various peripherals like see these are the peripherals you can show uh, this is the peripherals like here you can input everything like these are the pins where you can input everything like here you can this is a jumper this is called a jumper wire and you can put this one so this is actually how the peripherals okay i find you got it now let's get back to the presentation and memory now what memory you know that you are storing something like you are saving a program in it or you are saving uh, anything like program or any ram any unit like any data you are storing into the arduino it's always it's always dependent upon the memory that what you are storing within it okay like let, uh, let me show you again this clearly mm, this one this one is termed as this one the way you can see this one this one is a microcontroller the black part i will be showing you this part later hmm. prithik it's clear right like presentation and me is both are uh, visible right prithik uh yes for example don't worry about it hmm. so yeah now the most interesting part uh this is actually an arduino like uh, the most important thing like how what's an arduino actually and why arduino like we could have used anything like why arduino only see arduino is the basic thing or the major processor microcontroller like a playground for us uh, students like when we start with a b c d we use like small letters we don't start with sentences right so that's what arduino is arduino is just like the a b c d for any microcontroller any mic like anything you are you want to start with embedded systems you should know arduino because the coding they have in arduino is most important now coming to the various thing this is the uh, wait so about the architecture uh, it's a risk architecture you are it's reduced in uh, information set are uh, what set uh, risk Uh, it's actually a risk architecture that's present in this arduino and uh, it, there are two type of like cisc is there risc is there and misc like these are the various type of architectures that is pr uh, present in the uh, architect uh, in this arduino so but in this arduino like there are various types of arduino you can see it is an arduino uno but there are various types like arduino mega is there arduino nano is there lily is there like you have always seen that apple watches or something that watches are there so what are that what is actually that are that is actually a part of arduino lily okay and what is it at mega 328p that is the microcontroller that is present over there as you can see here this is a microcontroller the this black big black one is uh, this is the microcontroller and this is avr based microcontroller avr there are you are all you know arm and avr these are like it is a huge thing today i'll not be going into deep that avr arm cortex and all part but yeah there is and it is 8 bit microcontroller now what do you understand by that 8 bit microcontroller or 10 bit like what is the difference with 8 bit 16 bit see 8 bit means there are 8 by 2 to the power 8 uh, total data uh, data can be sent over there in one time like this is actually the meaning like 2 to the power 8 possible in the memory bus 2 to the power 8 total uh, possible memory buses are memory buses can be available and at a single time 8 bit of data can be transferred from rx and tx so this is the rx and tx pin i'll be showing you what's actually rx and tx pin from rx and tx pin that 8 bit data can be sent using the uart communication so that's what uh, this 8 bit is significant about now coming to the arduino duo this is a exception why it's an exception 
because it's an ARM based microcontroller. That's the only exception that is based on uh, ARM based. Otherwise, all other Arduino uh, companies are preparing an on, on AVR based one. So yeah, this is actually very important to know about the Arduino parts because most of the people can code, but they don't know what's actually the various pins about. See, here A0 to A5 that you can see, A0 to A5 is actually the analog pins, okay? Analog pins means like we have like, see, our whole physical world is related to analog values only because we can't get any value like digital zero or five, zero or, uh, zero or one is only possible in the language of computers. But we, Arduino is what we are interfacing with the real world. And most of the sensor like LDR sensor, that light dependent register sen that part, that sensor, or you can say pressure sensor, this all things are generally based on your analog pins only the values or the input values that they take that's in analog like they will be taking 133.28 133.1 1, like any values that you can take and uh mind you this a0 to a5 it's a 10 bit it's a 10 bit adc the uh, 10 bit adc means it's an analog to digital converter is there that because arduino always understands because it's a computer it will always understand one or zero and rest it always understand uh, zero, but think that only zero to five. This what's so uh, there is a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will surely explain. There is a question, I guess. Mm. Yeah, please explain the difference between uh, different types of uh, serial. Yeah, yeah. The my next slide is only this only. The difference between UART versus I2C versus SPI. That's my next part only. I have made a slide on that. So yeah, hmm, that's it. So yeah, this is the I2C you can see. Now uh, as one of uh, like uh, Dipanjan asked about the communication. So I'll be telling about that. See, here it is written that I2C, SDA, SCL. SDA means serial data and serial SDA, serial clock. And this serial data accumulator, like these are the various pins that we use for the I2C communication. See, there are actually three types I've already made. Huh? This is my next slide only. What are the various serial communications present in Arduino? But let me first tell you that what are the pins used? See, yes, there are actually four pins used for SPI. That is uh, serial clock, MISO means master in slave out, MOSI and SS. And here also there are various clocks. Uh -huh. In the uh, here also there are which are clocks. See, this is the clock. Huh? 16 megahertz crystal. 16 megahertz crystal. This is the clock frequency. Huh? This is the clock frequency of the Arduino. Means at what clock this whole Arduino is actually working? Like you are sending a bit after which with the second uh, operation will take place. This is actually the clock. This is the voltage regulator you can see. And yeah, that's the rest. Huh? Importantly, this PWM signals. PWM means pulse width modulation. Pulse width modulation means it varies from 0 to 255. Like if you have a value like 10 or 12, but you can like a motor gives the output of 0 and 1. But you can always change it from, you, but if you give the output to PWM pins, these are actually analog output. Means you can vary the values from 0 to 255, like main maximum value multiplied by 250, like any value you want between 255, 0 to 255. That's it. So like it's... So like it's fine. So this is the whole thing about Arduino. It's coming to the serial communication. So yeah, the serial communication that is used, that is UART communication. The most used serial communication is UART. Universal Asynchronous Reception and Transmission. Today we'll be talking mostly about UART communication because SPI and I2C, these require bus uh, knowledge about buses. Means how to communicate because we can communicate. Uh, yeah, and let me tell you, I2C is the fastest about this. I2C is the fastest among all this thing. And this is the full duplex communication. UART is also a full duplex, but SPI is a half duplex communication. Rem now I'll be telling you what's actually half duplex or full duplex. Actually, full duplex, have you seen uh, a walkie talkie? Whenever a person is, uh, a traffic police is talking in walkie talkie, that's actually a half duplex, half duplex communication. Whenever he is speaking, we will not be able to speak. And the other person is speaking, we won't be able to speak. Like. The, yeah, means only one time transmission will be there. But in full duplex is like what we use in our phones. Other person is speaking. We don't care what the hell he is speaking, but we are also giving our own opinion. That's what happens like, uh, yeah, UART communication and I2C communication. These are actually, and uh, 
yeah see uh, spm is serial peripheral interface and i2c is uh, you're the fastest among which is around uh, i guess around 10 mbps or something like eight, nine, eight to don't quote me on this i don't remember the exact speed but spi is around 3 to 5 mbps it can give the speed uh, this communications okay and these are the various pins that we different pins required for spi and i2c as you have previously uh, in the, you have previously seen in the picture and but in uart you require rx and tx only the two pins that is required is rx tx ground and vcc only this four pin that's why i told you that uart is the most used communication so yeah this is about the whole uart thing now there is some yeah so this is about the uart the full duplex communication and uh, as you can see this is a uart protocol you can see oh, what is a protocol like whenever a communication is taking place there is a uh, need for something like transmission and uh, reception to happen so this is the whole thing the transmission like i will not bore you with this theory parts uh, sensors and actuators you all know you can read this part like as, as an input to the i will be showing you the practical part that you will get more interest because i also hate theory part ha huh. now go to tinkercad that's interesting Mm. Any questions, right? Mm. So, uh, Ritik, is it visible completely now? The whole thing? Yes, uh, it is completely visible. Okay, fine. So, yeah, this is Tinkercad. Now, what's actually Tinker? Let me show you from the beginning. Otherwise, you'll be confused. See, this is Tinkercad actually. So, what is actually Tinkercad? Like when you like, uh, we mostly we don't have all the instruments with us, right? Like we can't every time go and buy the instruments. Because, but it's important to have the instruments, but we always can't. So, if you want to design something, so you can use this application that's Tinkercad. Like it's very easy. Like. Uh, it's more about like see there are 3d designs you can made and we generally do circuits over here so these are some of thing i have made like it's a piano that i have made using this uh, tinker cat like you can uh, okay i'm showing a create new circuit so yeah see here you have different components you just want to search arduino you will be getting arduino uno r3 will be easily getting this part like this one like anything you want you can arduino uno right but it's not for me arduino ah, this ah, this part so you have arduino right so now you can use like you can connect anything like if i want to connect like for example an ultrasonic sensor ultrasonic but uh, so wait, let me connect an LED only. This is an anode and this is the cathode. Obviously, you know what's the difference between. So let me ground this one first. You need a register, obviously. Uh, actually, how much? Let me give uh, 10, 1, one is fine. Okay. If you're not first, actually, anyway. You don't need an register over here. Anyways, let me put it. So yeah, this is the cathode and this is the anode. So what I will be doing, I will first grounding this one. This is with the Arduino. And this with this. Any questions are there? You see.
it's fine. So yeah, so here you also can write the code over here. See, so here you can write the code. So like yeah, it's very interesting that you have like blocks also, but we generally don't use blocks. We'll be using text. So yeah, as you can see, this is already written for you, like void Arduino, and it's a serial monitor that we'll be using. Uh, its stimulation is right. So yeah, the LED will blink its 13 output. So start simulation. Using pin 13 comma output, everything is fine. Oh, it's 10 actually. So, yeah, you can see right the LED is blinking. So, that's yeah, I means it's very easy, like nothing takes to your uh, like nothing important is over there but it's like it's really very easy like it's nothing so difficult about it so now yeah so it's like see you can see the led is blinking so like what i've done is a very simple thing like even a class if it's taught like anything like class six seven like you can now in like they are being taught coding they can make make apps so why not this right whitehead junior anyways so yeah, you can see this one, the LED is blinking. So this is the very uh, basic thing. Now I'll be telling about a uh, bit about that coding, right? So this uh, about the delays. Now what is actually a delay like wait, I'll be showing you live, like how it fast it's working. Like I have given a thousand milliseconds. So I'll be giving it a very small delay. Uh, like let me decrease it to like, it's in milliseconds. So let me decrease it to hundred milliseconds. Like it's not working. Uh, good. Good. stop simulation yeah see so let me write it to 100 milliseconds 100 milliseconds and just see 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 just the means just by changing the you can like do anything like it's not so difficult like you are just writing and yeah, if you write this wait, uh, very important thing, if you write your serial.begin, I'll be like stop simulation code. Just I'm, I'm uh, showing you the very simple like, serial dot begin. It's 9600. So yeah, and if you write your serial dot available, Greater than zero. Uh, serial. But I don't guess. Don't think here it will work. But actually, I'll be showing you. Pentel and high. High. It's actually serial dot available and everything. Serial dot begin nine six zero zero. I don't I don't know where it's work. Serial monitor works over here. Right? See. See and your serial monitor. Don't think it will work over here. Five six seven. You can see right. High is it's printing high. So that's it. Like uh, you can do anything you want. Like it's very easy. Like it's just the beginning of what I've shown. You like you can do anything. Like you can like hey hi hello world or anything. Like see here I've just written serial dot available greater than zero and serial dot printed and high. Fine. It's like very easy stuffs to do. It's nothing. Like you, if you have the zeal to do, like it's very interesting. You can do anything. Now I'm showing you like why use this Arduino only. 
now what not uh, why not anything else like is clear right so yeah you can see this one code and everything part is there now i'll be showing you that why we use this arduino only not uh, you will be asking that embedded systems can be anything wait so yeah i am showing you why only arduino Uh, this is the code composer studio that you can see mm, see uh, it's taking some time but it will open like why we use Arduino not why not any other embedded systems like there are many like MS like I've worked with a circuit called MSP 2430 that's from Texas instrumentations uh, yeah I'm showing its opening uh, let it open fine so yeah any questions like anything like because it's the first time you are learning like anything like anything you have like you can ask anything just about this not only about the slides like any doubts you have like why embedded systems why use it's still not opening why hmm see this is actually a uh, let me show you hello led hello blink okay hello blink what i just uh, have shown you now so this is actually the code of hello blink in case of msv 430 as i have told you see you can see that it's completely like you will be like for the for, for, uh, person first thing is it will be simply seeming as a Hebrew for you all, but it's like uh, that part on like let, let me like see. Hope it's visible. Like you have to define everything in terms of bit, like everything in terms. This is the code just for blinking an LED. Hope you can see this one. It's in a different type of embedded system, not in Arduino. So I guess you can see this one. Like, uh, let me show you. There are many things like interrupts are there. Like, if you want to learn this part, let I can surely take a session, but it will be too long. Like, if it's like uh, it's really difficult to hold it online because you have to get the kits also. So that's thing. And uh, now the main part. I'm coming to the main part. Like, it's visible, right? Like, how difficult? Like, why we use Arduino? Why not anything else? That's the this. Like, it's difficult for you for the first time also for me also it was like really difficult this is the code now coming huh. now coming to the main part that's why we use uh, hmm. now coming to my project that I have built like you can see right it's clear Hmm. Now coming to the project light, right? see, you can see this one, right? No, uh, this one you can see, I guess. And this is hmm. yeah. Yeah, see, so this is my phone. You can see as you can I like uh you can see right where I are WhatsApp. I can see you guys, you can see, I guess, right? This is my phone. Let me just show you the demo that how what's the thing about let me turn off the light first see this is the blink cap interface uh, how you can see it's a blink cap interface and if Please i turn back from a search okay fine see the light see light is now off okay now i'll be turning the light on using the google assistant that that words this project was meant for like today's session especially okay google turn on the lights So that's it like it's really very not that difficult like it's seeming very interesting but it's not that difficult not that difficult at all just have to think is that you have to you make your concepts clear uh about lights off no actually i didn't make an applet for that because you have to uh, pay for the other part like you can only create three applets in in if triple t for free okay so only i only made this lights off and that's the same procedure i'll be showing you so that's a blink cap interface. You can easily use this part. Like you, if you press this one off, uh, like you can see all this off. That's it. Mm. 
now yeah coming to how this is created actually that's a main part uh, present see the board that i have used over here is termed as the node mcu board node mcu or rather you can see generic esp8266 module now esp266 is a series of boards that it uh, com uh, that it comes with and but we have used a generic module because it's easy to compute with this part and now what is what is special with this uh, esp8266 board is that uh, the only special feature rather you can say it's an advantage that it has wifi enabled like you can see this part like wifi is written over here right wifi so that is what wifi is enabled over here and if you have some knowledge about the cloud api right api i think api client server you are uh, like uh, obviously you are like you will be familiar with these terms apis cloud servers then interfacing ui ui ux okay so blink app i have used already as you know that it is just an uh, interface that we are using and these both devices are connected with a server now what's this server is we don't have this access to the server because obviously they will not make this open source it's a completely like secure server that this blink app have and we and we only have this blink app blink app with this that's uh, the interfacing that we're using now this is very uh, interesting thing that's if triple t what what is actually if triple t that is if this then that i'll be showing you in details what's that if this and then that and this is webhooks webhooks means uh, like this is if triple t and blink app okay like just uh, please hear me like if you want to learn this but uh, hear this but very clearly because i have not made any slides bigger for making it boring to you see just here you see if triple t and blink app how this two will be connected like if triple t is a different server or rather you can say interface and blink is a different interface so you always need some sort of uh, like communication pro communication uh, between them like we always all use either http as a, you all osi models right you will be knowing that osi models are there tcp ip models are there okay like in communication portion so simply all we use here webhooks webhooks uh, you just understand webhooks as a simple communication between this if triple t and blink server and if triple t have this assistant like uh, have an interface that's the google assistant like without google assistant we can also use adafruit adafruit is a different server adafruit.io you some of you must be must have heard of that adafruit.io so i'll be uh, showing you step by step that how this whole thing is working okay so just wait so first uh, let us start with this node mcu coding right it's really very really interesting So yeah, the, oh, any question? Hmm. Hmm. See, ah, uh, this is a various, very simple coding. Like nothing. Like it's like this part that you have, ah, uh, that is shown over here, na. that is like if you download this libraries it will automatically come okay they will always insist you to download new 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 libraries but it's better that you don't do it directly because you have to always change the json file like json 5 to json 6 you have to convert every time like if you do that downloads see it's a simple code like there's nothing so like about rockets rocket science in this it's like a simple code like if you know the basics of c it's completely a c++ only if you know the basic of c++ you can understand okay see this is the blink print serial this is blink print serial what does it does like mm, uh, no fine okay, fine it's not a problem see what is blink print serial blink print serial actually uh blink print serial wait like let me increase the size uh, hi size is not increased not been increased the size is not getting increased no anyways this is blink print serial what is it? what does this do this actually connects the serial printing like the way you saw that on and off that how this communication is taking place that is a serial communication using blink print serial okay and esp8266 is wifi.h so this is the module or the header file that is used for accessing the wifi in this node mcu board and this is blink simple esp2 this is also a type of of uh, header file you require like it's connecting the between the esp2 wifi and the uh, blink app okay you can get yeah. and this is the authentication token now what is this authentication authentication token is actually like authentic authentication token is actually when you connect a device 
or any sort of thing like you are connecting two devices like it's always important that you uh, set up a uh, authentication like you set up a connection between them so how this connection is possible like it's not that it will be like automatically the connection is created it's always an authentication token like uh, whenever you like uh, uh yeah. the best example is your atm card whenever you swipe your atm card that's a uh, part of nfc near field communication uh, nfc or you have rfid also that's rfid that uh, chips that you can see that's rfid so actually what happens over there whenever you do your uh, swipe your card you have to uh, enter a pin what's actually pin like how you you know that atm card how the transaction will happen the pin that you are entering now that is a sort of like i'm not telling it's some type of uh, analogy rather you can say it's a type of uh, the token that is accounted to your server like yeah this person is having this much money in the account so for that only uh, like if you are shopping from x amount that x amount only will be deducted so that authentication token is your that uh, atm 4 pin password that's the authentication token you get and after that is password and uh, sid whenever you are using this like this node mcu connecting so this requires uh, pass uh, this uh, this needs to be connected with a wifi right so this is the wifi and yeah i have used a hotspot over here because sometimes there's problem because there is a problem in 2.5 gigahertz or not uh, when uh, 4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz wifi ranges there is a some uh, sort of anomalies over there anyways this is uh, this red i so it's better that you use a hotspot so that it gets connected very quickly so this is the redmi like i'm uh, my phone and that's the 1 2 3 4 like it's my password for my hotspot and yeah it's serial.begin that i have shown you that's for beginning of the serial communication and 9600 baud rate as this serial monitor will not open uh, it opened uh, greatly a uh, serial monitor like here it's called the serial monitor see here you have like different types of bots now what is actually bot it is a bot rate this is the rate at which the serial communication or the data is being transferred from one device to the other okay like you can see that like there we are here size increase yeah size is not getting increased anyways oh uh, yeah i think it's very small but yeah there are different type of bot rates ranging from 9600 to it's ones to 250000 bot like it is really very fast okay anything uh yeah fish give me anyways so yeah that's the code and it's a simple blink dot run okay this blink dot run is for your running your blink app this is a simple code that you have to upload this is the verification code like yeah, let me verify for you all first Mm, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Ruthik, for this. Let's clear this. So yeah, the file is getting compiled. Yeah, and it compiled successfully. Now I'll be using this one. Like now I'll be showing you like how it's compiled. Wait. So yeah, now you can see. Now I'll be using this upload. This upload what? It is a serial commission. Now you'll be see seeing blinking light over LED over here. See, upload. I think it shouldn't give any error. It's compiling first, and you can see this one right compile. Ha see, there will be LED blinking right. You can see the LED blinking. that's a serial communication that's taking place i think you can see the it's how much percentage is there 69 uh, 76 and it's 92 it's 100% see you can see the led blinking right all over that's that's the uh, way your serial communication is taking place about this uh, earlier this where and this device the serial communication that's taking place that's uh, clearly is seen over in this portion now see i have this on and off like i'll be using off and yeah that's already there like on and off you can easily control this over the blink app okay 
so yeah now it's like anyone is there or listening or i'm speaking alone let me see oh yeah it decreased to 19 i guess anyways fine so yeah it's the it's 19 because obviously people lose his interest so do i so yeah the final i'll be telling you about the very very briefly what's about if triple t so that you can implement this project further in your if you want or you, rather you can contact me in linkedin or uh, linkedin only you can contact me through there mm, yeah see this is the applet section okay the how to create this applet this is the, if you say turn on the lights i'll be showing you this applet So this is the settings that I have. Like I don't think that it's now. In, okay, fine. Yeah, I'll try to wrap it up quickly. So it's like a bit tricky thing. I have to show you in the command prompt also. Okay, like any messages? No, not yet. Anyways. So yeah, let's make an applet for turning off, as he suggested. Let's create. Okay. So I'll be creating an applet to turn off. Okay, it's live. I'm showing you that how to create an applet. See, the choose a service. What service do we want? We want a service of Google Assistant. So okay, we are using selecting Google Assistant over here, and we'll be saying a simple phrase. Okay, what do you want to say? of the lights rather you can or you can say turn off uh okay turning off a trigger so this is a trigger like i am saying and this is then uh if you say a simple phrase then what will be there the light will be off uh, getting switched off so how this is happening this is this portion like this let me get into webhooks what i told you about webhook service right see this is the main thing like making a web request that how this web request is being given or that how it is being proceeded over there making a web request so yeah let me copy because this url part is the same mm. so first you have to write http dot slash slash and then you have to get one eight this is constant for everyone okay or rather it, it doesn't changes merely but like you can change it if you want I have triple T. Mm, settings. What is it to do? One eighty eight point one six six point two zero six point four three. This is the last part, please. So wait for something. It will be so. Yeah. This is the request. Which type of request you want to put? Because you want to put that uh, off or on into the LED. So here it's coming put, and here always uh, application slash JSON. Okay, because this is I already told you right. You have to change the JSON file in Arduino. So this is what that application. It's based upon the JSON. So it's JSON five, JSON six. So it's application slash JSON. And yeah, you remember whenever you want to turn off the lights, it's always one. Because it is like uh, low level, like it is uh, logical. Uh, logically, if you can, you know, if you know a bit about digital electronics, it's low. It's uh, it is it gets triggered at a value of a low. A low means one means you are off and zero means on. That's a zero level triggering. You can say so. Yeah. So I'm creating an action. Oh, oh wait. Slash. I have to put this one. Where this are? Do you know this authentication token over here? Authentication control slash control V slash update and which pin I am using. I am using the D pin and here I am using the GPIO two pin. GPIO two pin C. It's very interesting. Like D is constant. After D, you have to put the GPIO pin number. So here I am using the inbuilt LED that is in GPIO two. So I'll be writing D two. So yeah, it's over. Put turn off the light. Create action. Continue. And yeah, you are done. Okay, let me check now. 
uh, its uh, activity will be get notifications when whenever the update is active right so it's created right 19 is there right so i'll be showing you mm, so let me first turn on the light okay google turn on the lights let's see okay turning on fine Okay, Google, turn off the lights. Okay, turning off. That's it. Like it's very, uh, yeah. Anyone what's question about Arduino using time and date? Uh, can you please elaborate your question? Like, uh, I really like, is it possible to set up uh, the lights using time and date? Mm. Uh, time and date means what are you actually meaning uh, you please tell about this question see here are different things when you go into the applet i'm showing you just wait mm. yeah see uh yeah i have to upgrade my plan so i have to delete one of the applets So uh, which one should I deplete? My applets. Not no, yeah. So these are my so let us delete this one. Archive. So for delivering you have to just use archive, okay? Let me archive. So yeah, there are like different types of things you can do. Like if you have a question like wait, if this Google Assistant. Here, if you have like, if see a simple phrase, see a simple phrase with a number. Like if you say like the Google, this trigger fires when you say, okay, Google to Google assistant, followed by a phrase like set next thermostat to, like it's a password thing. Okay. Like it's simple, uh, it's simply a password thing that see a phrase with a number, see a phrase with a text ingredient. Like this is like same, like nothing different or something like you have just the different variations over here. Uh, block time for exercise at 6 p.m. Ha, huh, you are ask, uh, hopefully you're asking about this thing, I guess. Right? That safe is, uh, can you please reply? I need your replies. Uh, any replies from your end? Mm. That Arunabo, there, I guess. Huh? Arunabo, any reply from your end? Uh, like setting a reminder, a command like turn on lights at 6 a.m., 6 p.m. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got you, I got you. No, 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 that is not possible actually. Yes, uh, okay, okay, I got you. That is not possible actually. What you are, uh, let me uh, continue. So, yeah, what you are telling Arunabo is that you are telling that uh, lights at 6 pm, though that is a type of setting alarm, right? You are, if you want to set alarm, that is uh, that doesn't uh, get set over here because here you only give a command, it's zero or one. Like uh, forever, whenever you tell that uh, Google Home that okay, Google, turn on the lights, that's an immediate action. It cannot be paused for a second. Like it cannot be paused. And yes, Shams Firozis. No, we can. Okay. Can we code using phone? Yeah, yeah. We can code using phone. We can code. Yes, we can code this uh, IF triple T using phone. I'm showing you how. Yes, we can code. So, I have coded, uh, like not coded. You uh, see, first you have to choose this one from here. And after that, you can uh, regarding Arduino. No, 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 Arduino, we cannot code using phone. No. See, uh, how will you do it? Like, uh, how will you attach this USB cable? Like, yeah, you need to have that serial communication. Uh, so that serial communication is possibly, like, I, uh, I've i never coded, through, but if you can code your C++, then I, I don't know about that, actually. Like, but probably you will not be able to provide that uh, because Arduino is the minimum. It works from 5 volt to 7 volt to 12 volt is the best uh, voltage that needs to be supplied to the Arduino. And if you are using your phone to code into the Arduino, that I don't know about the serial uh, communication part. But uh, yeah, I can try later on and can uh, let you know for sure because I cannot say anything without any uh, perfect because I have recently seen a guy coding using his phone and a laptop keyboard connected to it. So I can't comment about that. Okay. Yeah, 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 Vijay, that's the 
that's uh, the thing like we can use something otg because some modifications can be done because uh, this is also uh, something like you can, your phone is nothing less than your like com uh, computer nowadays but the thing is that gpu gpu or something or something is there so yeah we can uh, sometimes we can code but i have never tried it okay arduino can be coded using android ha huh. that can yeah that can be done i'll surely try what's your name actually who told ask this question uh, it's rakhi kumari right okay i'll be surely that in our dsc group i'll be surely telling you i'll try i'll be trying out that and we'll be surely giving you a reply very soon okay any uh, more questions like anything you want to learn about the, because what i have told is just a uh, like a uh, 0.001% of what the basics was about so any questions like anything like anything apart from this any projects internships anything you want to know about this because it's a growing field right so anything like internships anything so you uh, please you can post your questions in youtube because it's a, like uh, a session that i'll be like after a long time uh so i'll be waiting for one more minute like let me see because the time is already over <laughs> it's 1857 ah uh, please any questions like anything the session is almost over and uh, all the slides and things that i'll be doing is as soon as the college reopens like i don't know anything about that okay okay l298 motor see this is a very interesting thing okay let me show you l298 uh, 298 okay. l298 motor so uh, yeah you are asking about this right where's ah let me show you see this is actually the concept of edge bridge this is the edge bridge okay this one l2988 nine motor is actually what's working out over here it's an edge bridge concept like if you have like who was that guy who asked it uh, how to connect and control speed of car okay okay so you don't have any uh, okay it's not a problem like you can okay we'll be surely finding out a way very soon that how to code it using uh uh using this idea uh, this android phone i'll be surely telling you out okay how to connect and control speed of car okay see this is the l2989 motor okay so you will be like this is the output so here see it, it's very interesting like there you will be just this is the arduino input as you can see this is the arduino input that will be giving like 5 volt ground and all this pins these are the arduino inputs and these are the outputs okay so now i have to show you the code right so i have to write the code actually so who was that guy uh shams fieros okay so wait let me write the code so connection i i'm not doing okay control z so connection i'm not doing i'm just writing you the code see so yeah pin mode what will be there uh, according to what should be there it should be output right like there were four pins i guess right in one in two in three in four like four pins right h pf cooling system what you are asking about hbi for cooling system uh, what what's your question how to connect na yeah see ha huh, h bridge oh edge bridge oh, actually it ha ah, see it's actually edge bridge edge bridge is a concept like i am showing you okay when you have google you don't need anything right edge bridge see you can easily understand right this is the pnp transistors pnp npn pnp four transistors i hope you know how this works see yeah so in the opening like it is the emitter like which type of configuration you can 
this is the emitter base and collector the, it has three terminals and whenever like there is a thing like whenever like two uh, two pins like emitter like uh, two pins uh, we generally use it as a switch in case of saturated re like the uh, switch is it can be used as a switch in case of uh, saturated region that both are uh, both are forward bias and if both are reverse reverse bias that is it in the cut off region and one forward bias and other reverse bias that is in the time of active region okay active region we generally use for amplifiers but here we will be using it as a saturated in the case of saturated when both the junctions will be forward bias so yeah this will be on and this will be on so the vcc will be transferred from here to here and this two will be open uh, this two will be open simultaneously uh, it's given no it's not uh, this one is a bit i guess see so here this motor this uh, when the uh, current will flow like this the motor will move in this direction like this two part and whenever these two pnp transistors depending upon their motor and vcc the current will be flowing through this part like either the opposite to or this opposite this both will be on on off at this uh, at different time intervals okay so this is a, like if you uh, read about it, it's nothing like if you just have to know the three regions of our transistors that active like active saturated and uh, cut off region that's it oh con uh, see how to connect control speed this is my basic idea so how to uh, means how do you want to control the speed right so if you want to control the speed now you have to use this uh, uh this concept of pwm pwm how you use like let me show you how you use this pwm i'll be showing you the giving you the live demo that how we okay so let us consider which pin shall i use for pwm let me use pin number six okay pin mode six output so i'm not writing serial dot begin or anything so you have to just use a for loop for int i equals to zero i less than 255 i plus plus okay see this is very important for the person who asks this digital right i six comma i okay. so this is the basic code see this is how you can control the speed like speed really fast 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 like starting from zero after that this speed will increase so what's the maximum speed i will be showing you a calculation right if you are the say the maximum uh, speed of the car is 10 kilometers per hour 10 kilometer per hour and you are using 255 okay and 255 means one so if you consider the 255 255 means 10 kilometer per hour one means 10 divided by 255 so x x is equal to 10 divided by 255 into x so that's a simple thing this calculation is what you have to guess okay this is a maximum speed edit like wait See, this is the maximum speed. Got it right? Where's the where's that guy? You got it right? Uh, that Shams Firoz. Mm. Please reply, dude. Uh, Okay, uh, last 30 seconds. I have to complete this. Okay, it's nine. Already 7 5. Okay, I have to complete this one. So, Shams, uh, anyways, I think you you were present. Like, it's I've shown you the complete code that how it's actually working. This is the way you can control your speed. Like, if you give any value, your speed will be that much. Okay, 255 means the maximum. So, 1 means 10 by 250, and x means x 10 by 250 into x. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, Ritik. 
Are you there? Hey, Razat. Yep. Hey, Razat. Okay. Uh, really nice stream. I enjoyed it personally myself, and uh, I really got some feedback uh, even personally that uh, a few folks are now interested into hardware after your session. That is really a cool achievement. Uh, getting someone's word is. Yeah. So um, that would be it for us for today, because in one hour you can only grasp grasp only so much, right? So of course you will have some more questions. Uh, wait, uh, Shams Firoz, it's two fifty five is not the speed, dude. Two fifty five is uh, is not the speed. Uh, two fifty five is a maximum amount. That's I told you. It's eight bit. Arduino is an eight bit microcontroller. So eight bit means how much? Two to the power eight means how much? Two fifty six. Two to the power eight is two fifty six. So it's actually varying from zero to two fifty five. So it's actually two fifty six values. Two fifty six means. Uh, 255 means that it will show you give you the maximum speed of the L2989 motor and if you decrease the 255 254 or some amount that 10 by 255 uh, that 250 uh, the 10 minus 2 10 by 255 amount so that's it okay shams firoz so please do connect in telegram okay i will be happy to help you ah uh, yeah I hope uh, it's uh, clear for shams uh, even if it's not uh, to follow up in telegram as uh, Raj, uh, rajat already said and uh, do connect uh, with us on Twitter, Telegram, and whatever means you can find on. And of course, uh, you'll have more questions with Rajat, about Rajat. You can contact Rajat on his Twitter and uh, the social media Rajat is on. Please, Rajat, would you like to share your social media with us? Uh, social media, I'll be uh, posting it over here. Wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know my social media. I have to new comments again. Ah, this. Thanks for giving Twitter. Okay. You, uh, it's LinkedIn. I LinkedIn, right? What's this is? Uh, it's uh, his Twitter account, and uh, you can share him. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, in this uh, fabulous event. See you uh, next time. Okay. Okay. Bye bye.